Just like this. My name is Tibor Frank Smoan. I'm born July 19th, 1966. Just about 52 years old. Oh, look, baby. I have flowers for you. I always buy you flowers, hey? <laughs> there you go. Um, I was a coal miner all my life. I worked hard all my life. Um, I had to do a little bit of jail time, and I ended up being a bottle picker. I get in and out of these bins every day, a hundred of these. 10 cents, 20 cents. I'm homeless, but I'm a very, very, very polite gentleman. I got a, I got a beautiful little girlfriend that loves me so much that happened upon me. <laughs> that happened upon me and uh, I think that, that life is good. Okay, and I'm gonna go first up this alley, okay? Babe. We just love each other. He's like my best friend in the whole world. We hold hands and we walk along and we pick our bins and we laugh and we talk and we play. And when things get down in the dumps, we crawl under our blankets and we hold each other till the dumps go away and then we get up and go again. Some people, they live inside, right? Like if you took their cars and their houses away, what, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Like, you know, they're not uh, ingenuitive like us. And like, man, even doing this, like a lot of people call us bums and whatnot. We're working hard for this, you guys will see. Like, we're like, not even close to done. Look at solid silver. Look at that. Look, check that out. Yeah, people just throw it out. We depend on this. We, de we depend on people throwing out their garbage. Like, like I said, you just seen the, the, the stuff I just found. Like, it's unbelievable. Like watches, watches, rings, like, man. We're not robbing old ladies or we're not stealing. We're not going through people's garbage to look for pay stubs or anything like that. We're just like collecting bottles to make a living, to, to make a few dollars to feed our habit. It's, it's a disease and you'll never lose it. You can never get better. Even if you're sober, you're still an alcoholic. It's a, it's a disease. How's it going? All right. Were you guys bottle picking today? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I met Keyboard actually first. He was just uh, someone that uh, my first probably few months uh, on the street I would see quite often, uh, whether it be picking bottles um, at the Chinook Bottle Depot, cashing them in. So he was someone that was fairly friendly. He would come up and talk, introduce himself. Um, and then just gradually, you know, I told him I was doing a project on homelessness because I was new to the district and uh, I wanted to figure out what was going on on the streets. And uh, he gradually gave more and more information as to where he slept that night. There's our, our we got blankets in here and whatnot. And we call this the hole in the wall and it's a safe place and it's actually half decent warm to sleep in. So, it's where we sleep, that's one of them. It was important for me being new on the street to know this, just to figure out, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's dark and you're out here and you, you see people walking around and you question what, what are they doing, what's going on. So it's helpful to know what a typical day for them is like so that um, I know what they're doing and I can almost keep tabs on them. Well, I have to see your face, Tibor. Myself and my partner would ask to take their picture, take their picture, write down their name, their date of birth, and then kind of made a little template which helped us 
recognize who is who and be able to talk to them on a more personable level, calling them by their name. And um, so gradually, as they began to trust us, they kind of laid out a typical day. I didn't think there was that many homeless people within the district. Um, just with the zone and areas that I had worked, you'd see the odd one, but usually I figured they were coming through the area. They were using it more as a, a means of getting from point A to point B. I wasn't aware that there was an actual population that, that resided and called District 6 home. So a little skeptical at first, wondering if we were going to get enough information that we were looking for. Um, within a short while, that being within an afternoon or two, uh, very quickly found out that the homeless population was a little more significant within the district and that there was more than enough people here to base this project on. Yes, they don't have a home and yes, they don't work, but they definitely have what they consider their homes scattered throughout the city and they definitely do have things that they consider jobs or that they're working. Lots of glass today here. And, you know, I, I think it's just to basically understand that that's where they are. I think I learned the, the most in the first 15 minutes with Tibor than I've learned in the last several years in regards to the homeless people in the area. We may not be up on the upper echelon there, but you know what? We work for a living. We earn what we keep. We got and friends. We are causing <laughs> grief. Yeah, and we have a lot of fun. <laughs> you know what? We're no different than anyone else. We just, you know, when I was growing up, my daddy used to tell me, we're not poor, we just don't have any money. Yeah. You know, right. But we got each other, and we got a world full of love and a ton of adventure. Can I hug you with his bag permission? I, we hate you too. I, we love you and we hate you. Uh, I thank you. You're welcome. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. And you're the reason. Well, I like to call it what I call eHarmony for you guys. Every day of my life I will thank you. Hugely, you guys have hugely. made a difference in our life like you would not believe. It feels great to be thanked for, for what you do, but at the same time, like I say, here we are almost five months after the fact and they're still happy, happily together. Uh, probably more so than I see a lot of married couples. Oh, I love you baby. Love you too baby. It feels good to see them in the situation that they're in. I have never ever been in love like I am with Tiva. I have never ever been in love with anybody, male, female, child, animal, ever have I been in love like I am now. Like he's the best thing that ever, ever happened to me. I always have fun. They say that love don't pay the rent after all the money has been spent. But I, I got you, you babe. <laughs> Everything's always, there's always a new challenge, a new adventure. It's always fun and he's always supportive. Even when we don't get along and of course that happens, he's still so supportive. This man I'd been with, and he was very, very abusive in every possible way. He was a heavy-duty drinker in a way I can't even imagine, and very big on every drug imaginable. The meth, the morphine, the crack, the coke, the, the, the everything. And we fought regularly. Then one night, he ran out of money and needed to get high and he invited some friends over and decided I was going to be the party toy if that would get him the drugs. He, right over here? Yeah, he did. I was suicidally depressed and so drunk I couldn't remember my name. And I remember phoning 911 and saying I'm going to kill myself if somebody doesn't save me. And I hang up the phone and I start banging my head and I turn around and here is Brad <laughs> with his roof rack flashing. And he's like, excuse me, miss. And I'm kind of vague for a while. And then I turn around and there's Paco. <laughs> and this man saved my life. You did. Well, I did what I, I did what I could. You saved 
my life. I helped you in the in the ways that I could, and, and you it, know it's what? resulted you know what? In, a, I... in a happy relationship between yourself and Tibor. Oh yes, and you know what? I love you forever. You literally what? saved my life that night at that payphone right there. We are gonna get married, and we'll you're. You? Well, you give me a call. We're gonna get married right there at the payphone. We'll bring oh, the yeah. police. We'll bring the police car. You know what? You're gonna be the best man. Excellent. Would you? I'm honored. I would do that. Would you? Absolutely. Oh, I will. And that'll be the maid of honor. Perfect. Although their life is different from what most of us expect and perceive as a happy life, they're, they're happy together and uh, between the two of them they're doing quite well. I found that once I got a connection with them, it, it made every interaction a lot easier. You know, once I would speak to them about what their interests were, so you were, you were bottle picking today, how much did you make today, and you know, how long were you out for, and where did you sleep last night, so just common things that they deal with every day and it just made every interaction a lot easier. The police officers from District 6 are wicked, are wicked people yeah. like Brad and Tracy and what's the, what's oh, the, what's the other fellow's name? Yeah, Ryan, I Ryan, think is the Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, they, uh, they, they leave us alone. And uh, when they come up to us, we freely talk to them. We freely talk to them and be very honest with them. When you know to some degree what they're going through, you can find something in your past, in your history, in your life that you can relate with them. And once you get to a point where you're relating with them and they're relating with you, it's all about cooperation. These police officers know us and uh, they, uh, they actually respect us. Unless we're doing something really wrong, they really don't harass us. I'm not the shiniest tool, tool in the box, but I tell you what, we're, we are very, very honest people. We are very, very honest people. And uh, some of these guys just, I don't know if their job gets to their head or whatever, but some of them treat us like dirt. We hope for the world that, you know what, if, if this will make other people, other officers, other... Aware. Aware of our of, of our situation, of, of, of how we have to live out here. And if, if we can make one more person as compassionate as those two officers are, we've made a big difference and that's all that matters to me. I love you. I love you. I love peanut. <laughs> I love you too, baby. I do. I love you. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.